Mr. Lord Hopper, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's Oral History Project. I'm Dr. Horace Huntley. We're at Miles College. Today is June 12, 1996. I want to thank you, Mr. Hopper, for taking time out of your schedule to come and talk with us today about the Civil Rights Movement. All right. I just want to start by asking you some questions about your family. Where were you, where are you from originally? I'm from Marion, Alabama. That's Perry County. Marion, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Were your folk born in Marion County? Yes, my folks was that's Perry County. That's Perry they, County. They, okay. they, they were born there in, in uh, Perry mm -hmm. County. Yes, and that's Marion, Alabama. Marion, Perry Alabama, County. and Perry County. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have this eleven of us. Eleven of you. Nine of I, I, I have to get on my yeah. fingers to name which uh, where many sisters yeah. and brothers. Where did, where did you fit yeah. into that? I was the second. You, I'm you the second, second oldest. Yeah. Oh, okay. All of them depends on me. I'm the only one here now in yeah. in Birmingham, and the rest of them is a far off, and they exactly. I have to take care of the home. Okay. And I'll see about the home. So all of your other brothers and sisters. Uh, out of out, out of, of the state? Yeah, of course. I have one brother living in the home house. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But they pins on me. Right. Right. Okay. What kind of uh, work did your uh, did your father do? My father was a farmer. It's a farmer. Right. Did you yes, own your own farm? Yes, we own our own farm. Out right. the years we did, I guess I say we've uh, forty um, from forty. 30, about 35, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we bought. Okay. Um, yeah. Before that? W w we were sharecropping. Sharecropping. Okay. Right. And how did it come by that you were able to buy your, your own place? Well, the government, some way they, it come in that the government will, uh, gave people's own farm an opportunity mm -hmm. to buy their homes, and uh, they, they gave them the money. And mm -hmm. My dad was one that always wanted to go out and try his hand, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave it to the, he went. Right. Mm -hmm. the, tell me about your, do you know how much education your mother and your father had? They only was limit about, I say about five, six, about sixth grade, uh -huh. about high as they, right. neither one went to college. Right. Did your mother work outside of the home? No, no more on the farm. No she used to farm. Work, with the, work with the farm, he helped daddy. Uh -huh. And with that many children, I don't think she had time to work out. <laughs> so she had a pretty big job right, right. there at home. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, what do you remember about growing up in, in Marion? Well, I remember normally that mom and dad was type people that was sort of a strict in a way. They didn't allow us to have our way. And we mostly stayed around home most time and worked on the farm. Mm. Do you remember when you started first grade? I can't hardly remember back at first grade, but I do remember uh, when I said about the first or second year in uh, in in school, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a sort of a old school that we went to, but. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a rural school. Rural school, right. Uh -huh. It wasn't nothing like oh, it was old, actually old building. Yeah. How yes. many teachers did you have? One. One teacher? One teacher. For how many right. grades? For all of them. That was through the sixth grade. Is that right? Right. Uh -huh. right. And how far did you go in school? I only went to sixth grade. Uh -huh. And after sixth grade, what did you do? Well, after sixth grade, I think I, I started working with them. Um, with the dairy farm, mm -hmm. and from there, I got drafted into the army. Okay. So, because so normally, it was sort of slow. I, I guess I was sort of slow in learning. I didn't learn as fast, and I was mm -hmm. about 18 yeah. at the time that I, from sixth grade. Well, how, what do you remember about that transition from home to the army? How was that? I mean, well, that was, that was one, I, I think that, at the time, like I say, mom and dad were sort of strict on us, and 
A lot of folks didn't want to go down. Mm -hmm. But to me, that was a way to get away from home. And it was a thing that I wanted to, I, I wanted to do. And I was glad when, they, when I, went to, I went to Fort Benning. and Mama and them had to take me from Marion. It was cold that morning on a wagon to Marion to catch a bus. And that's the first time that I had been out of Marion when I got on that bus heading to Fort Bend, Georgia. And you were 18 years old at the I time. I was 18 years old. And never been out of Marion. So your world was, was starting to broaden then. Right, mm -hmm. right. What, what was it like when you arrived at Fort Benning? Well, when I arrived at Fort Benning, uh, I guess it was something like, something I'd never seen before and around people, that, that many people I'd never been around before. And it's just something that was strange. And I, I, I guess the training that mom and dad gave me, that's what kept me mm -hmm. sort of into it, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. How did you how did you like being away from home the first time? Well, it gave me an opportunity to, to be sought on my own and that's what we look for and it I felt good. Mm -hmm. Um what year did you go into the army? In nineteen forty six. I know uh, nineteen forty five. Forty five. Yeah. Okay. May in forty five. And where did they send you? After your basic training? After basic training, I went to uh, Germany. I was uh, took basic training in uh, Fort Benning. And, uh, and then I went to uh, Salinas for a while, Salinas, California. Mm -hmm. Then they gave us an the opportunity. They said if you uh, re-enlist, they were fixing to send us to, uh, uh, I think, to Japan. But they say you, if you re-enlist, you can go home and stay home for about a month. And then you, then when you come back, say you go to European, which was Germany. Mm -hmm. So I re I took the opportunity and I re-enlisted. And then I came home and stayed home for a month. Then after that, I, and I left and went back to, uh, went back to, uh, to, to the camp. Then they sent me from there to, to uh, Germany. What did you do? What was your job? My job, well, everybody don't know this, and neither wouldn't you know, but uh, normally I'm one that try to look ahead and try to see things, what what going to benefit the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when I got over there, they was, uh, it was a thing that you could do that was work in the kitchen, or you can go out on the air strip every day. If you worked in the kitchen, you worked all day. You was in there at 5 o'clock in the morning, you worked all day, mm -hmm. but you was off the next day. If you went out there and worked on the field every day, you had to go every day. So I, I chose the kitchen, and, uh, and I think that's what uh, a lot of folks, when I come out on my discharge, they said, cook. Mm -hmm. And my children jump on me and say, Daddy, you can't cook water, so <laughs> I, well, you can cook. <laughs> so you were a cook in the, in the military? Well, uh -huh. I was mostly a KP. I didn't do much of cooking. I was mostly mm -hmm. cleaning the pots and the pans and things like that. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, and how long were you in the military? Yes, sir, about uh, one year and six months. You say you re-enlisted. I re and that was that was before I went. You know, before within the six months, uh -huh. before they was gonna send us to to Japan. To, to Japan. Japan, right? They gave us an opportunity to re-enlist there, or either go th from there. To, they told us that now, if you re-enlist, you're gonna probably be in two to three years. I see. But if you go from here to Japan, you're going to probably be out in a year. Mm -hmm. So I didn't worry about that. I want to go back home. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go to Japan. And I came back home and stayed home a month. Mm -hmm. Then I went to, so that was to re enlist, but I hadn't right. been in but, but six months when I re enlisted. What was Germany like? Germany was one that uh, was, uh, was exciting, actually. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. And I liked it. Yeah, what did you do? What was exciting about it? Well, it was you got a chance to see the see the world and actually see. I think we went up to um, Stuttgart a time or two, and I think that was one of the, the main places in Germany. And, and it just was a uh, just with being out. Actually, that was. Yeah, I remember yeah. when, when I was in the military. One of the things that I found much different is when I left Birmingham. Yeah, I was able to actually do things that I was not able to do here in Birmingham. Right. Did you find that 
to be the case in Germany? That to be the case in Germany, you had an opportunity, I mean, and, and be with different people, see, because when I went in, we was, uh, it was still a segregated world. Right. And the and army was segregated. The army was segregated. You asked, you was black, was, you were still black, mm -hmm. and whatever in that, in that, that time. And, but you got a chance to be around people, and uh, it, just, it, it just felt different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you felt like a, like a real man for a change. Right. Because you were not necessarily uh, discriminated against right. in the same manner that you, you were. You didn't feel around. that. You didn't feel you was discriminated against mm -hmm. that. Right. Well, now that you have your world had broadened mm -hmm. and you, uh, you, you're about to get out and come back home, what were, what were you feeling? Were you ready to come, come back to Birmingham? Yes, I was ready because I didn't know. I, actually, I didn't know what to expect. And I, oh, but you were not yeah. from Birmingham. You I were actually from, 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 Marion. from Marion. I was going back so, to Marion. So you were going back to Marion. Right. Okay, what was that like? Well, this was... Uh, I guess what you call a learning because, see, when I left home, I was on the dad's thumb, mm -hmm. and I couldn't tell him where I was fixing to go. And I'm the oldest boy. Mm -hmm. I had a sister older than I was, and, but she was still at home. Mm -hmm. So when I get home now, I got an opportunity. In my, my mind now, I'm, going, I'm coming to Birmingham where my uncle White, James Whitehead. Mm -hmm. He is there, my mother's brother. And I was going to come there and get a job at a Sipco. And that was my, that was my thinking. And then all I do, I go home and stay home. I get out on November the 2nd. November the 18th, I was back in Birmingham trying to get a job. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, that's what my thinking was. Now I, I know I got to go to work. Did you get the job with the Sipco? I got a job with the Sipco. I had to go back home and get mother to sign for me because I wasn't quite old enough mm -hmm. at the time to uh, for them to take me. So I, I was still uh, considered a minor. Mm -hmm. I think he had to be 21 at that time to. Uh, well, to how did you get the job at a Sipco? Well, when I first went there, my uncle was there, and he was very everybody. He was in the YMCA, and that's like I say that. He was off of the jobs. He was in a job that seemed to be that had an opportunity to help folks. In other words, he's a sort of a stepping stone, and mm -hmm. and I knew that, and, and everybody knew him, and it was an opportunity for him to introduce me to the folks and tell them I had a nephew coming, and i like for him to have a job. Mm -hmm. Did you live with him? For a, for a while. I said I lived with him for about six months. Six months I lived with um, my je uncle Jay. Now, you were still single at the time. I was right? still single, right? Yeah. And right. How long did you remain single? Well, that was twenty. I married when I was twenty-five, so I was. Okay. I think I was. That was about four or five years. I had been working four or five years when I got married. Where did you live after you uh, left your uncle's home? I lived up there on Twenty Fifth Avenue North in Birmingham. Uh, it's with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sanders. Mm -hmm. I got a boarding. I boated with them. Mm -hmm. And what kind of work did you do at a zip car? I was started off as a as a grinder, grinding fold axles. I think you can, if you see some of these tractors now, these they got an axle on this on that that on the front of it, and that's one of the axles that we was that we were producing at that time. I don't think they they don't produce it now, but some of the fold that's an axle, and I started grinding mm. there and after a while what is grinding grinding with the rock with a big old grinding rock mm -hmm. grinding the rough spots off and okay. making it smooth oh, okay and that's what i was doing at that time mm -hmm. and then you progressed from there i progressed from there at that time like i say you didn't make any difference you had colored lines where you couldn't go but certain places mm -hmm. this was black Colored work and white work. You didn't go over here and do this work. You can do all you could into the colored line of it, mm -hmm. and that's as far as you could go. So you had somewhat of a ceiling then. Right. Basically. Right. Um, you were there four years, possibly four years before you got married. Right. And when you got married, then did you still board or did you buy your home? No, we started renting mm -hmm. at that time. We, we rented for 
I said for a few years, I said about, uh, I forgot now when we bought our first home, but uh, I believe it was right around 60. Mm -hmm. We bought our first home in 60, and that, now, that was 46 when I went to Sipco. Right. So, now, yeah. Sipco didn't have a union, is that right? Still don't have a union. Still does not have a union. Right, right. How did that impact upon you as a worker and other workers at, at, uh, on your jobs? Well, Reciprocal don't have a union, but they sort of worked with it to keep ahead of the other surrounding companies in the area. That kept people sort of satisfied. If, you, if I was, in other words, if U.S. Pipe was making a certain amount of money, the Reciprocal was normally making two or three pennies more than the people that were doing the same type work. Mm -hmm. Then we had a better benefit at the Cipico. We were getting a bonus at that time, and nobody else was getting that. Every three months, if you made a profit, every three months, then they give it back to you in, mm -hmm. in a percentage. And that's one of the things. Now, we had a union. We had, we had a lot of time. We had peoples out there to come in and uh, try to get the union in because uh, I know in in uh, 60, in 61, 60, I said 58 or 60, we, cause I was involved in that. I mm -hmm. even now pushed for it because, reason I was pushing for it because they was still crushing the black man, keeping him down, mm -hmm. and still, you were doing the work. Normally we do the work. We, they bring a white man in today. I was at that time, I was oiling. They bring a white man in and say, just hide and said, Lord, uh, this fella here, I, he hired today. Mm -hmm. And we want you to show him the work. But he's my boss. I had to show him the work, but he was my boss. And I didn't like that too well. And someone told us, if you get a union, a union will stop all of this. And, and I went out in 60, uh, 58, and some, somebody come to me, and we got started trying to get a union in. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what union it was? It was e UMW. The UMW. UMW, right. Uh, right. Uh, how did that, um, that episode play out? You well, did not episode, get the yeah. union. Well, we didn't because uh, at the time, I was the main source, black. We had a few, one or two whites trying to at that time, but they was, if you know white folks, if they get dissatisfied, they will get somebody else to do their dirty work. Then when things get a little better, then they ready to turn, turn their back. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I said, now, if you get Lloyd, I said, now, if, you don't, if you're not going all the way, I said, don't mess with me. I said, because I'm not one that's going to start and stop. I said, if I go, I'm going all the way, whether I like it or no. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, when, we, when, when the voting was... I was the only black sitting there. I had one fellow to sit with me at that time, John Cupp. I think he left Sipco right after. He left Sipco after that on his own. They didn't bother him. And, 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 but at that day, I was the only black, and I think they didn't have no white that was started with us to sit. They had all had turned back at the time. Hmm. And at the time, I, I didn't want it. But I had told them I was going all the way because a black union at Sipico wouldn't have meant nothing. Just all black mm -hmm. wouldn't have meant nothing because they would run you off. So there were there were no whites involved at the time. At that the you time were going to vote. of the vote, right? And there were not very many blacks. Well, we lost about I think uh, we we lost about five or six hundred, about six hundred to three hundred I think at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that effort then. I'm sure you learned something from that effort. Were there other efforts after that? Yes, there were other efforts after that, and the next effort came along. I knew what, and actually before that, uh, well, the president, we told them after that, they wanted to know what they could do. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of time when things happen, folks want to find out what, what can be done to better the situation. Mm -hmm. And I got up a, a, a committee. It was about two whites and two blacks, 
And we went to talk with the president. And we told him what the, what the thing was. See, you had, like you got your, your paper there now. You could walk in, your, before that, you could walk in the boss man's office and he said, I got a record on you. And if you don't straighten up, your record going to get you out of here. Well, he would, a lot of times, he wouldn't open it up. He didn't tell you what was in your record. He didn't tell you how, how you got your record. But he could have wrote anything down in there, and you didn't know about it. And, that, and I told him then that what we needed, we needed them to let us know when they put something in our record and what it was about. And we needed better jobs. And from that, from the, they promised us then that they wouldn't have no more that the, the hidden records, or, or what you call hidden records, they would pull that out. And they did. And the next time when the union come up, I was totally against it because of the way that they, was, they were doing. They weren't completely right, but a union wasn't going to help us in the other situation. Either. Were these black workers or white workers or combination well, it was at the time? Combination. Uh -huh. Combination. Now, you mentioned in the first effort there were some whites that were disgruntled as well. Oh, yes. What were they disgruntled yeah. about? Were they, well, they were, were the same issues that the black workers... Uh, well, normally they was being mistreated from the work hour. Mm -hmm. They were getting, they thought that they weren't making enough money. They was making money, they were making some money, but they should have been making more. Mm -hmm. And they figured if they had got a union in there, they could have been making more money on the hour than they were. Mm -hmm. And that was the mo mainly thing. Mm -hmm. But after they got into it and they found out that this union man told them, say, well, if we get a union in there, they're going to be, the blacks are going to get as much as the, is the whites, and they're gonna be, they're gonna be different, and that's when they started, start having private meetings by themselves. Okay, so they in fact gave up the struggle then, simply because black workers would would be their equals, right? If the union came, right, out. right. Okay, right. So that that then split the right. workforce. That's, that's right. split the by race. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you were then rather active in 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 your work area, attempting to change things at the, at the, at the right. uh, workplace? Well, at the CIPICO, you have, you say, like you say, now we don't have a union. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had at that time a zero board. Oh, a, a, a zero. Zero. And a zero board. Auxiliary board, okay. And that was uh, consist of 12 blacks. Mm -hmm. They was elected for a two-year period. Yo, the whole, the only the blacks voted for the blacks. Mm -hmm. Then you had a board of operators, or operators, mm -hmm. or operators, a Oper board of operators. Operatives, yeah. Okay, that was white. Mm -hmm. They was the, the head of the world. They were the main factor. Now we had to vote for them, but they couldn't vote for us. And we go in with our complaints, the complaints that our folks give, give us, mm -hmm. and we can go in with our complaints, then give it to them, then they will take it further. We couldn't, not a time the president would meet with us on our complaints, but you know that, you know how it was sometime that he would listen and he wouldn't in any way because you didn't have no power. But they had, there was a sham. A few years later, they, somebody, they filed a suit. Now they all together. You don't have two different boards out there now. Mm -hmm. So they're combined now. They're combined. I was mm -hmm. one on that, I was on that board. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the year that I, I ran, I ran two years straight, uh, mm -hmm. three years before I got elected. Mm -hmm. And my slogan was, if you, man, you want a man with courage, vote for Lloyd Harper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess yeah. that's, that's, that's what was the slogan. Right. And I got on, I stayed on about 12 years, I think. That's right. Yeah. Well, in 1956, in June, the NACP was outlawed from operating the state of Alabama. The Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights was organized. Were you involved in that particular effort from the beginning? Well, my beginning started with the bus. With the bus was in Montgomery. Okay. You started with. I bus started Black collecting money, and that was dangerous at that time because mm -hmm. if. They knew about you collecting money for things like that. You, you could have lost a job. Mm -hmm. I started collecting money in, I think, that's when I met Shellersworth and Billups. Mm -hmm. I came upstairs in the te Pigeon Temple building one day with, I guess I had about $300 that I had collected from folks to send to Montgomery. 
So in a, in a way, I was involved in that. And the night that, as far as I know, when they organized, I was there. Mm, okay. Did you ever participate, physically participate in the Montgomery bus boycott? No, I didn't. I but just you were, only you raised money. Raised to, to pick send the money. To yep, send yes. money down there. So yes. you were there, though, the day that they organized for was, the Alabama Christian Movement. Right. That was over here, I think, when they, the night they organized, they was at Sardis up on top of the hill up there right. in Sardis Baptist Church. Yes, yes. Right. Tell me about that. What was it like that, right? Well, it was very exciting because uh, the man that the Sardis preacher, he's, he's the one doing the most hollering. Hmm. And I all could remember, remember him, how he hollered, but I think he's the first one to jump back out. Mm. Right after that. What was his name? Yeah, I, can't, I, I his... can't remember his name. Uh -huh. now, but he, but had was a, that a... he had a whine when he, when he talked. So yeah, I, yeah. Was that a big meeting? Yes. Were there a lot of people there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of folks at that, 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 that day, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so the mass meetings that were taking place... Were right. you involved in those? I was in all, just, I'm sure, I went to Monday night meeting like, like I go to church. Mm. And that was, I, that was one of the, that was Monday night. I know where I was going mm -hmm. on Monday night. I was going to the meeting. What was a mass meeting like? Mass meeting was very exciting and very, you know, uh, a thing that was, looking like it was getting people together. Mm -hmm. Looking like it's something that was trying to get people's mind change from one thing to another and, and and that's what we needed because we didn't have we didn't have a leader at that time I mean you know here and, and we needed something to help us to get off of what we were the way we were going and we can't normally we we needed a leader mm -hmm. and that leader then did that leader come in the form of Fred Shuttlesworth? Fred Shuttlesworth at that time mm -hmm. right at that time were you a registered voter I think I know right. I don't know exactly when, but I know. I'm pretty sure. I, yes, I was a registered voter because I, I I went down. When I went down there to, to register vote, I had been once, and they asked me, "Say, have you been here before?" And I told them no. And I think I I got registered that, but it had to be done the movement because mm -hmm. they're the one doing the pushing. It had to be. Well, do you remember? Time. You said that you didn't get registered. Did the you? The first time I went. Okay. What happened the first time? That the you first went? time I went, I think the, all the questions and something I I couldn't I couldn't pass them, and I didn't pass them, and I didn't know all the senators and whatever they was asking. I didn't know. Do mm -hmm. you remember specific questions they asked? Well, as I think it was, who was the? Uh, I believe it was Pope Judge and. Uh, who was uh, the senator from Alabama and stuff like that? And mm -hmm. during them time, I, I think I was I didn't know it that 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 right. I just went. But the next time I went, I think I had it all. Mm -hmm. I, I was ready for them, right. but they didn't want me in there if you had been in within six months. So I saw the field. I told them no, I hadn't been down here before, mm -hmm. and I went on through it and I passed. Passed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you participate in any demonstrations, or did you? you know, one of the issues was uh, the issue of riding the bus. Did you uh, ever get involved in any of those type of demonstrations? Well, they was asking at the at the at the movement meeting. They was asking for folks to to do some things to help to promote it or to try to get the folks into it and they was asking folks at that time they just had started I think one or two from the week had rode the bus and they'd had some incidents so I decided that that was on January because my baby my last child was born January 1st 1960 and my other two children Sharon and uh, Edward we went to see their mama that as Sunday I'm sure it was on Sunday and when we come back, I said, well, we're going to ride the bus. So we parked our car downtown, and we caught the bus. Okay, the first bus, when you catch a bus and you drop your money in that uh, change thing, and you ask the man, say, oh, I dropped too much money, and you said, I, I want my money back. He said, your, your bad luck, you dropped it in there, that's it. 
So we dropped our money in the box, and this white man sitting on the side, he started raising so much sand, and he told the Astor driver, say, if you ain't going if you can't get him off, I'll get him off. Why did he want to get you off? Well, because we was going to sit, we sitting there on the front seat. We sit on the front seat, and I asked my children, I said, uh, uh, the bus driver says, uh, how about you moving back? I said, no. I asked my children, I said, have you all satisfied? They said, yes, Dad, we satisfied. I said, well, you satisfied. So that's when this white fellow said, say, if you can't get him off, I'll get him off. And the bus driver asked me, he said, will you, will you please then, will you please get off? I said, well, if you give me my money back, because I knew, you know, that they hadn't been done. I said, you give me my money back, yeah, I'll get off. He gave my money back, and the next bus come along, we caught it. And we didn't have any trouble from on the next one from the, uh, from the whites, but we had one, I mean, they, I think they was grumbling. We had one black lady in the back. I think she knew me, and she hollered, Hopper, won't you come on back here where you belong? I said, well, we satisfied up here, miss, and uh, we're going we gonna to sit on up here. So we sit there, and we came on out to Sipco. That's why we was living out there in the Sipco area. And mm -hmm. Then I went back downtown later and picked up my car. Mm, that's it. But in the, in, the, in the marches, I didn't, uh, I think, uh, and when the dogs was out there, I think I was down there one day, but I didn't, I couldn't afford to go to jail and with Sipco and with the job. So I was in the crowd. I didn't participate in the marches because mm -hmm. I know if I went to jail, then that was going to probably, that was one thing Sipco was waiting on, yeah. and I didn't, I didn't get into that. Were there other efforts that you were involved in, although you were not into the, the demonstrations uh, going to jail? Were you doing anything on the job at that time? Uh, were, I know you had raised funds for the Montgomery bus boycott. Right. Did you do the same thing? I for did the same thing for, for, the, for, for this in, uh, for, you know, for Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I would pick up dollars. I, I get to folks that actually was afraid or wasn't going. You know, you got some people that ain't going. I get money from them, and I would turn it in. If I would, you know, if I couldn't make it that night, I'd probably give it to Lola or something like that and uh, for them to turn it in. Did uh, any of your supervisors, anyone know that you were collecting money for the movement? No. Did you, did you have any difficulty in collecting money from I some did of not, the workers? No, I did not have any difficulty in collecting money. They didn't mind giving it. Mm -hmm. A lot of them was afraid to go, or at mm -hmm. least that's what they say. They were afraid to go, but they didn't mind giving money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have the opportunity to actually know Fred Shuttlesworth and meet Dr. King and other people that were rather prominent in the movement? Yes, I knew both of them because he uh, met Dr. King. I knew, uh, see him and his, me, his wife and me from the same town, mm -hmm. Mary, and I knew her. Mm -hmm. And I met him, I met him during the time of the movement because, see, I think we met and I talked with him because of, from let him know that I was from Mary and I knew his wife. Mm -hmm. But Shellsworth was, was one that I, yeah, we knew each other from the start because, yeah, like I told you, the first time I met him in Billups, Mm -hmm. Billingsy upstairs when I carried that money, and that's when I met Fred Shelterford. So he knew me personally, mm -hmm. or know me personally right now. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that, were you a member of New Pilgrim I at the time? I remember New Pilgrim. Uh, New Pilgrim. I went to New <clears throat> Pilgrim in, uh, uh, yes, I, yes, I was a new member of New Pilgrim then, mm -hmm. I think. No, I went to New Pilgrim after that, after, after, after that, because I, Saw Smith. That's when I met Smith mm -hmm. in the movement, and I went to New Pilgrim. I was at uh, Sixth Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's where I came from. How active was uh, Reverend Smith? Reverend Smith was very active. He's very high. So, mm -hmm. so all I can say, he was very active. He's, uh, I think, he was the treasurer or whatever. But he mm -hmm. was very active. What about Sixth Avenue? Was it an active church at the time? I don't think we ever had a meeting at Sixth Avenue. For as I can, I can remember, I don't think we ever had a meeting at Sixth Avenue at the time. Because mm -hmm. I think, uh, when, when good game, okay, was when good game right. was there, because good game was one. I think he, that that's when I joined Sixth Avenue. I joined uh, New Pilgrim the the day they buried a good game. Mm. I joined. That's when I joined. But 
he was he was against it because he I, I know that he talked about his turkeys that he wouldn't be able to get since the black folks was doing the thing that the white folks didn't didn't care much for him now and he wasn't going to be able to get his Christmas turkeys and stuff like that. What do you mean his Christmas turkeys? What that they've been giving him, you know, he's one of the big men and white folks are giving him turkeys and <laughs> since these, since the niggas have gotten messed up in that now, he's gonna cut his turkeys out. Yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. so he was, he was against, he was against the movement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was that one of the reasons that you decided to leave Sixth Avenue? That was one of the reasons because if I, if I'm following you, Doctor Grand, uh, and you're not doing the thing that I think is is, is feasible in 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 helping me to move up, then I don't think I need to follow you. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons that I left, because Smith was in it, and I knew he was in the movement, and, and I wanted to follow somebody that was leading. Were there other members of other churches that decided because their pastors were not involved to get involved with a pastor or church that was involved? Now, I couldn't answer that because I don't know, but I didn't, you know, I can speak for myself on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. You didn't know of any yeah. other I don't know members of, any, of even uh, right, New right, Pilgrim. Right, I don't that know. That, 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 that was that, well, that was their reason. No, no, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. If I were to ask you, what was, what do you think was the most significant, your most significant contribution during this period of the movement? What would you say? From my baby was born January the first, nineteen sixty, and I think about that sometime now. Every Saturday night from twelve to from from twelve o'clock today, I was guarding the church up there and then Shelterworth House, hmm. and I did that every night. And then, and I think mm -hmm. I was going sometime when and, and and the wife was there. I didn't know when the baby. Was was going to happen. Sometimes I think about that now, but she didn't have anything. She didn't say nothing about it. But every Saturday night from 12, that was my God night, and I got it. And I think that was one of the things that I contributed to, and I was, I'm proud of it. How widespread was that, the garden of, of various places? Was well, there an organization that was doing that? Or? Well, it was, they was organized. You had folks there every night. Mm -hmm. Different. They had different hours, and that's what and every, every night they were there. And your night was on my Saturday night. My night was Saturday night, night from, from 12, 12 to, to 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. and that's where we stayed. Were you, uh, what, what did you do during that period of time? No, I was sitting and watch and walk around some, you know. We had that porch there that we washed off of, and I can't think of the man's name of the house now that we was. We washed off, but that's where we washed off his porch. Had a screen in, and we so we can have a wide view of the church and the house. Were there ever any any occurrences that? Not while I was not on my shift. Mm -hmm. No occurrence no, on my shift. Were you armed? We had shotguns in the building. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you never had had no, any no, no, reason to to use to them. use them. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I know that there have been. Other people who have talked about uh, people driving through the community. Did you ever see any I didn't police see cars? No, any or? strange nothing during my time I was there. I didn't see any strange mm. any strange thing happening mm -hmm. in no my time. Um, yeah. where were you the day that the sixteenth Street Baptist Church was bombed? I was headed to Marion in my automobile when I heard the news. Mm. How did that? That's I couldn't hardly drive. It shook me. Oh. Very oh. disturbing. Did you know any of the families? And I knew the Mister. What's his name? That I just knew him. The uh, photographer. Photographer. Yeah. Yes. I just knew him because he was he was in the movement all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew him. Yeah. Yeah. If there were any. If you had the ability and you wanted to change something about the movement to make it better, what would you change? Now or then? Now, with your with hindsight. 
if you, but the change in what, what happened then, yes. Yeah, well, I think during the times uh, back in that day, I didn't, didn't know much about the day-to-day -day operation, and, but looking like things was moving to me in the way that it should be. I, I, I probably didn't know exactly what the, what the part was, but I would say today, I think, we as a whole, that uh, a movement that we have today, uh, that don't have one or whatever, but I think we, in a whole, should be more about what Dr. King talked about, and we look like we got to the point that we are satisfied with what we got, or nobody want to make the move and, uh, and, and, and go further. And they're just satisfied with, with things like they are. Do you think that basically people, black folk are satisfied with the station that they find themselves in today? they satisfy with the station that they find themselves in or they don't want to make a move. Nobody wants to be the one that to, to negate, you know, to get out there and start it. In other words, if everything is, if, if it ain't broke, they say don't fix it, but uh, it's broke, but we don't know it. Mm -hmm. See? Well, we don't, we don't accept it as being broke. Mm -hmm. Everybody's for self. Seem to be more so than than trying to help others, Is like that? the Dr. King. See, you, it's hard to find anybody today to get out there and do the thing that King and Shelley with them did, mm -hmm. because I got mine, and why mess it up? You know, mm -hmm. that's what that's that's what we that's what we working on today. So today, people are not looking at the collective good, they're looking at the individual good. The individual good, that's right. That's what it seemed to me, mm -hmm. that I would think that's what they're looking at. Yeah. Do you think that uh, there will be a, another thrust for movement such as uh, developed during uh, the Martin Luther King days? I don't know whether it'll be in our day, Doc, because I think, like I say, people are a sit, a, a sit back. In a way, I think, you know, we, we, we're getting pretty good jobs. We're making good money. So what are we going, right now, what, what would be the thrust? What, if, if we can't, the thing that we should be doing for and fighting for now is this drug war. I mean, trying to get these things out, and mm -hmm. and nobody seemed to be that interested in, in trying to to start that. But everything else is everybody seemed to thinking that they 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 driving their big cars, and uh, mm -hmm. I, what what I'm worried about, I, I got mine, yeah. you know. The issue, of course, at that time was segregation and racism. Right? Uh, has that been? Uh, uh, dealt with effectively enough? Well, it's been dealt with, but not effective enough. But I'm to the point now, Doc, where I can, I can go eat mm -hmm. where I want to. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go eat then. I couldn't go nowhere. I, I had to sit on the back of the bus. That bothered me, mm -hmm. see, and, 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 and I need to do something about it. But anywhere I go now, I can... I can go in, and if you don't, sometime in when the family go takes we. My wife loves fish, and she, if anywhere they say a big fish place or somebody do good well, fishing, she or uh, fish, she going. Mm -hmm. We go up to Cub somewhere up there every once in a while. It's about twenty eight miles up that road. I think is is uh is there's a corner up there where we go. But when we walk in, ain't no only blacks in there is us. Mm. But we don't feel like you know nobody. That when you they welcome you when you come in, mm. and when you go out, no problem. So you know, what are we gonna fight for now? This I can go where I want to. Mm. See, in a way, but segregation is still here. Mm. It's still they they got it in, in, in certain jobs. They hold it, and, and I guess if you start a thrust, you still gonna have that. But, so you're saying there are still difficulties, they're sort of camouflaged now. Right, they're and camouflaged many now. Many people yeah. are satisfied because right. they don't have those physical barriers anymore. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything else that we have not talked about that you would like to share with us as it relates to Birmingham or the movement or to you personally? Well, I would say that mm, not necessarily, but I think that uh, First Birmingham and the movements, I think they did a very good job in that day. But the only thing about when we get to a point Look like we we stops. In other words, I, I we we don't got there. We we don't keep going on this road that we should be traveling on. We should still be fighting this segregation thing. And I I think now this uh, farmers action thing is is something that was was hipping us. But I think they they pushing it to the side. Somebody need to be doing something about it. But nobody. Would, Nobody want to make a move that it don't look alike, and and it and it's just going going to be a thing going to die because there ain't enough of us pushing it. What was your opinion of the Million Man March? My opinion of the Million Man March was very. I think it was a very good thing, a very good thing, and I think that's it's something that when you can get that many peoples together that many black folks together, then it's beautiful. And I think it was a beautiful thing. And I just hoping that something will come out of it, uh, you know, that's productive, you know, will come out of it. Yes. Mr. Topper, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule in the middle of the day to come and talk with us. You've been very helpful. All right. And uh, we appreciate it very, very much. Okay. All right. Well, 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 well,